Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel for another Project Zomboid video. Now in this one, we're going to talk about the absolutely huge news that came to the Zomboid community this week in the form of their regular blog posts, where the developers at Indie Stone have given us some insight into what's coming next for Project Zomboid in 2022 and beyond. I'll cover the main points of this blog in the video to make it more easily digestible and talk about some of the features planned for, with relation to how they might affect the game and of course make some reasonable speculations based on what we've been told. If you enjoy the video or find it informative be sure to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other videos. So without any further ado let's get started. The first big bombshell that was dropped in this blog was a teaser video which is an old internal video created by the devs showing some NPCs in action. Now this was first uploaded to YouTube in December of 2019 and shows some basic footage of NPCs fighting zombies trying to avoid said zombies and moving together in a formation. Obviously this is pretty basic stuff but all the same NPCs are something that the Zomboid community has been looking forward to for quite some time and the info that follows this teaser is definitely going to perk a few eyebrows. Oh and the link to that video is in the description if you want to see that little two minute clip. Now with multiplayer released the Indie Stone has basically said that the team at General Arcade will continue to work on multiplayer functionality and optimization whereas the remaining two teams will work on a two-team release schedule. One of them is going to be solely focused on the development of NPCs going forward, which is a monumental step in the right direction for everyone that's been wanting to see NPCs in the game for quite some time. Previously, the plan was to work on hunting for build 42 and various NPC builds and implementation in build 43 and onwards. Now, this has changed after some reflection from the team. The full reasoning behind this this change is on the blog post that I will leave a link for in the description of this video, but it boils down to a couple of main points. Essentially, hunting is going to require NPCs in some form, with it being related to animals. And with that in mind, the developers essentially say that with the modding community as diverse and as skilled as it is, releasing animal AI would likely then result in several mods coming in and creating their own renditions of human NPCs using large parts of the system that the team has already put together. Together, and functionality that would of course be required anyway to make the animals work, which diminishes the otherwise huge milestone when human NPCs actually come out officially. So the question then becomes, how long will it take for NPCs to come to the game? Well, understandably, the team haven't put any concrete dates or timeframes in place, but they have released this image which shows us the next stages for NPCs and when they're likely to arrive in conjunction with upcoming builds. Now, later on in the blog post, the writer mentions that the first version of NPCs is intended to be releasing with build 43 and for anyone that's wondering we're currently on build 41. Now what this could include is still up for discussion. The team is still deciding the finer points but this quote gives us some possibilities. We're still deciding what should, could and would be present in the first NPC build. It could include autonomous NPCs that the player can group with. It could primarily include the reintroduction of story mode. It could have NPC animals or that could come later. They then essentially go on to say that they need to take a dedicated look at what they have, what would be feasible within reasonable time frames. So I would expect this to be put in a bit more detail perhaps in the next few blog posts but that's purely my speculation there so take that as you will. Now I could go on about NPCs for a good while but for now I'd just like to touch on what the team mentioned with regards to possibilities for NPCs and for that I have another question for you. We've got a lot of NPC code, lots of cool systems from RimWorld style priority and job systems, personality systems, procedural story event systems, combat systems, autonomous survival behaviors, advanced group behavior systems, vehicle driving systems, and a whole bunch more. While nothing could be described as 100% complete, the vast majority of the hard work has been done, is functional, and is extremely cool. Now that's a hell of a lot of information in one quote, and honestly could be a huge driving factor in the game's continued success if some of this can be released in a timely fashion. We could expect some pretty creative scenarios, missions, faction interaction and who knows what else we could actually get once we start digging into how these elements of different codes support each other. So that's NPCs covered but it leaves the question of what's going to be happening during build 42 before NPCs are expected to reach us. Now whilst this will be a smaller update 
date than NPCs, it's still a substantial amount of features coming to the game, and for some, it may even surpass the excitement of the big NPC implementations. First and foremost will come the balancing of existing in-game mechanics. Traits, professions, skills, and other areas of the game are all under the microscope here, and the team believe these have been somewhat neglected whilst multiplayer was being focused on. The team also mentions the medical system, but not in any detail, so I'm interested to see what happens there too, as personally I really do think the current medical system needs a few additions and tweaks to make it a more prominent feature within the game. The next part of Build 42, however, is the big one, the implementation of a tech tree expansion. Now this refers to the menu in which we currently craft from with the help of recipes. The devs make it very clear what the goal is here, and that's to provide a more content-rich end game experience, which I think is fair to say is one of the areas of Zomboid that is currently lacking just a tad. Whilst the team note that this may not have a huge impact on single player until NPCs arrive, it is going to make significant differences to multiplayer, which is ultimately now the larger part of the game, I would imagine. The idea here is to allow players to craft items that can currently only be acquired through looting, which will provide players with a chance to survive further down the line when loot spots are mostly dried up. The developers have a vision of allowing players to create post-apocalyptic communities, trade valuable crafting knowledge to build alternative items to those that can be looted, and the example they give here is that of creating clothing items to trade with other settlements, building brick walls to create more hardy structures, and whilst these are examples only, the goal is to increase the longevity of a playthrough on multiplayer servers, allowing players to form settlements reminiscent of Hilltop and Alexandria from The Walking Dead, years into the apocalypse, rather than server owners having to reset servers on a regular basis to keep the game fresh and interesting for players. Lastly, the team emphasised that this kind of late game crafting would require a group effort and a sizeable time sink to complete, which pushes players to engage with each other and work together to achieve their goals. I'm sure it would be possible to complete solo, but so much longer that groups are just generally going to be preferred. And honestly, I really enjoy this aspect as it's group gameplay and cooperation that increases the likelihood of interesting scenarios and continued longevity of a playthrough for individual players. Now, here's the big part of the new planned crafting upgrades, and this is another direct quote. These professions and expanded tech trees would be heavily gated and require specialization, often in case of the more complex crafting paths requiring pre-apocalypse skills that, while it's possible, are extremely difficult to attain to high levels after the apocalypse without a character specced towards them. So we're actually going to see some specialisations, making certain players or potentially even NPCs more valuable to groups. There are also plans to increase the amount of recipes that can be found in the world through VHS tapes, magazines and books, and this will ultimately attempt to more accurately model a multi-tier crafting system where survivors can become crafters of sorts, spending more time in safe houses while others go out and scavenge on their behalf. Lastly, the crafting experience will receive its final change with the implementation of bench-based crafting. This for me was a major source of excitement because I'm a big fan of progression and decoration of my safe house and this just ticks both of those boxes. Some recipes can be crafted on the move, some will require any tabletop surface and others will require specific types of crafting table or equipment to complete successfully. The aim once again is to provide another layer to the current crafting and make it more complex. There's even mention of potentially adding upgrades to crafting stations and equipment, which is another source of speculation with regards to how this would work. The very final thing the devs mention in this post that I think is worth touching on is just that they plan to rework gun mechanics at some stage to provide a more solid experience that will make guns more interesting to use, make them more player skill based and make PvP encounters more enjoyable. For now though, the team aren't committing to where this will fit into their schedule. So, a huge update with a lot in the works and I'm sure we could spend a whole lot of time discussing what may and may not happen in the future, but one thing is for sure here, and that's Project Zomboids developing a longer progression arc and a more satisfying endgame experience. The combination of both NPCs creating scenarios that would potentially put the player in danger, mixed with that of a more in-depth crafting system that extends
extends the looting period of the game and forcing specialization of characters will create a dynamic that will greatly lengthen the average playtime per life and per server reset. Now if you want to talk shop with me and discuss what's in this gigantic update then feel free to stop by my Twitch sometime on twitch.tv forward slash Mr Atomic Duck where I play Project Zomboid Live several times a week and it can interact with you in real time to answer some questions you might have. Special thank you to all of my patrons for their ongoing support, especially to those that have been playing on our Patreon server and taking part in our first server events. There's a link for that in the description if you're interested. Thanks folks and I'll see you all in the next one.